Hey, welcome back, everybody. Uh, here we are today. The sermon is entitled Love That Binds. Uh, we're talking about the fourth Advent candle. We've already lit uh, joy, hope, and peace, and now today is the love candle. Love, what a powerful and wonderful word. And that's what we're going to talk about. Now, do you remember uh, Christmas time? We get into movies, you know, your Hallmark season. Um, one of the classics, this was so funny, I asked for classic movies, and like right away at Mount Hill, boom, this movie come up. Get over here to Azika, and uh, nobody even thought of this one. But remember Ebenezer Scrooge, right? You know that story. Um, what was one thing that Ebenezer Scrooge had a lot of? His make and bank, right? Ton of money at the time. But what was one thing that he didn't have? And in the movie, we realize what he really needed. He didn't have love. He didn't have companionship. He didn't have friends or family. You know, none, none of that stuff was important to him. And then he realized by the end of the movie that that's, that's what really mattered. Now, <clears throat> when you think about uh, Ebenezer Scrooge to the people on the outside at the beginning of the movie, he was very successful, making a lot of money. And of course, there's several ways uh, to define success. And that's something we're going to be talking about today is a little bit different ways of thinking about discuss, uh, success. And Ebenezer Scrooge was successful money-wise. But then the other day I was listening to a guy on uh, Facebook, I believe, or somewhere. And it was really cool because he, he was talking about, um, he went back home for his grandmother's, I think it was her 90th birthday party. And his grandmother didn't have a whole lot. You know, if I recall by his story, I think she was a housewife and several kids um, and didn't really by world standards, accomplish much in her life. And this man who was saying this was, was a fairly successful man, you know, this grandson. And he said how amazing it was he came back and there was over 35 people in a room to celebrate this one woman's 90th birthday. And he said how impressive, how successful was her life that 35 people busy with everything going on in their life, dropped what they had to do because it was Nana's birthday. And to him, he went on to talk about success and the building of a family. He was so impressed at what she had and the love of the people around her. Now that's something uh, to have that many people to come around you, to love you and to wanna be with you. And that is something he realized that at his age, he had put off and how much more his Nana had than he did. Now, I want you to think about your own family and, and I understand that to some people who may be listening to this, uh, this could bring very difficult times because maybe you've had some sad moments or loss. Um, but if you think about your own family, think about the people that you spend the most of your time with, especially around as we go into Christmas time and holidays during Christmas, we go from family to family. You go to the in-laws, you go to your side, you have it with your immediate family. Maybe you have some friends over, but you spend the majority of the time with the holiday time with your immediate family. And then of course, maybe you're one of those people that are hosting Christmas at your family, uh, at your house, and you are going to a ton of work. You're, you have uh, oodles and oodles of, of money being spent on food, being spent on presents. Your house is completely prepared, clean top to bottom, or if you're like the rest of us, all the stuff shoved away in the corner, but it looks nice, okay? Your house is ready for company and you can't wait to spend it with your family. And we long to be together with those that we love and love us. What an amazing gift it is to share it with uh, with our family on Christmas morning. Now let's bring this into the Christmas season and the Advent wreath of love today. I want to read to you the first scripture. And this is one about testing God. It may not really seem to flow into the whole love uh, part of Advent, but this is about testing God. And listen to what Isaiah the prophet actually tells the king because he tells him to go ahead and test God. Listen to this, Isaiah chapter 7, uh, verses 10 through 14 says this again the Lord spoke to Ahaz ask the Lord your God for a sign 
whether in the deepest depths or in the highest of heights. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear now, you house of David, it is, it is not enough to try the patience of humans. Will you try the patience of God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. The Lord had a blessing reading of his word. Now guys, this is interesting here because, you know, King Ahaz, if you know the whole scripture, all right, he wasn't a good king. Um, and he actually uses scripture against a prophet. You know, you see this in, in churches and in amongst believers where they use scripture back and forward. Because Isaiah says, Ahaz, I want you to test God. And he's like, no, 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 I know. I know that scripture says you're not supposed to test God. Ahaz isn't doing that out of the right of his heart. What he's doing is he knows that if he tests God, he's going to get a response and he's trying to back out of doing the right thing by using scripture to cover him. So Isaiah takes it farther. He says, fine. He says, God already knows your heart. He knows what's going to happen. So God's going to do this on his own. He doesn't need you to test him. God's going to give you this miracle sign, this amazing thing that you will be like, wow, this happened. This must be from God. And this is where we get this scripture in verse 14. It says, therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and you will call him Emmanuel. Now, the virgin will bear a son. Let's be honest. You know, I sat and I talked with our youth group about this. I go, all right, guys, come on. Hear me out. Virgin giving birth. I said, do you really believe it? Hey, you know, I got a lot of good churchy kids. They're like, yeah, I believe it. I believe it. I'm like, okay, well, now, now be honest with me. And there was a couple kids that, you know, with their open hearts and honesty did say, yeah, it's, it's hard to believe that. Now, if we heard it today, if you just found out that your teenage niece, teenage girl in school was pregnant, and you're like, no, really, I'm a virgin, we'd be just as skeptical, right? Be just as skeptical. I guarantee you, Mary went through the same skepticism. All right, Joseph, yep, yep, uh-huh. Why would God choose to have a son and allow for that child to be born fatherless, to be born in a virgin birth. Why, why wouldn't the birth be in the normal way? Well, let me tell you why, but before I do, you need to hear the whole Christmas story, uh, the story of Jesus' birth. You've heard it before, but I'm going to read it to you again. And this comes to us in Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 through 23. <laughs> This is what the word of the Lord says. It says, This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found out to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace. He had in mind to divorce her quietly. See, it's hard to believe, virgin birth, right? But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name of Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. The Lord had a blessing in the reading of his word. Now, we've heard this story before, right? Jesus is born to Mary. He's conceived by the Holy Spirit. But why is this so important? Why is it important that it's a miraculous birth? I mean, we know that it fulfills prophecy, so you could be like, well, it's important because it fulfills prophecy. But, but I think there's more to that. And let me ask you this. As you think about, and, and I understand not everyone's uh, situation is perfect in this world, but the majority of births come out of a loving union, the ultimate consummation of a man and a woman being joined in marriage, coming together, and producing life. I understand not all of them are formed that way, but the majority of them are. Now think about this with the Immaculate Conception. 
with the Holy Spirit conceiving the child in Mary. What does that have to do with love? Well, I just said the ultimate consummation is when man and woman come together and they have a child out of their love for each other. Well, now we have God through the power of the Holy Spirit, not in any physical way as we understand consummation, but through the power of the Holy Spirit, now has a child and conceives with Mary. So why did God do this virgin birth? Because it wasn't in the natural way that you and I understand birth. It was through the Holy Spirit. Well, because this way, Jesus is both fully man, born of the mother, born of the Virgin Mary, and both fully God, born of the Holy Spirit. Now, uh, we understand that's very difficult to uh, comprehend, but think about it. Think about your own kids if you have children. And if you don't have children, think about someone that you can see this in their kids. All right, when I gave this sermon, uh, I threw my oldest son under the bus. You know, I kind of, it was a joking manner when I said this, and I really don't feel this way about him. But my oldest son is uh, 15 now, almost got his age wrong, and Job was sitting in the front pew, and I, I said, you know, when you look at my son, you see there are pieces of him that are his mother, through and through, that, that is his mother, he looks like his mother's side, and then you see him, and I said this in church in, in a good Christian way, and I said, and he's stupid. <laughs> Everyone kind of laughed and, and understand that it was in a joking manner. And then people see he's my son. The Holy Spirit conceived with Mary. Fully man, fully God. My son carries on a lot of my characteristics. Carries on a lot of his mother's. Yet he's fully himself as well. God gave us Jesus to be born of a woman. To be a man and live a life like us. And he was given to us as a special gift of love where God in heaven said, I want to show you my ultimate, my ultimate consummation of my love. I'm going to put my seed into a woman and it's going to be fully man and fully me. See, Jesus is that connection between God in heaven and us here on earth. The birth of Jesus signifies God uniting with his creation in showing us his love, that he loves us so much that he would become what he has created. Jesus, being fully God, put away his ability to be a deity and constrained himself to the human forms as much as in a tiny little baby being nourished by a woman. He restrained himself to show us how much he loved us. Now, what brings people together better than family events? A wedding, who's there? Your family? Your friends, of course. Holidays, family, some friends. Funeral, family, and of course, friends. Friends and family come to your Christmas, come to those kids' plays at school, go to sporting events, the baptism. Every time there's an event in someone's life, family is there to support them. With the birth of Jesus Christ, we are being invited into God's family. He's saying, I want to be with you. In fact, I'm going to make a way for you. I'm going to send my son just to be just like you, constrained to your wants, your needs, your desires. Yet he's also fully me because he can live a sinless life. And we're being connected with God in heaven. Just like Jesus, who was born, he had an adoptive father, Joseph, who was there to raise him and take care of him and teach him how to live, we get to become adopted into God's kingdom. Our God, not a biological father, but an adoptive father, loves us unconditionally. He raises us like, his own, like our own. And Christmas is the ultimate gift of the love of family, being invited into God's kingdom. And it is Jesus that connects us. God the Father says, here, I'm going to give you the greatest gift, the gift of love, the gift of family. And I'm going to throw it all together, wrap it up in this little baby and say, here's my Messiah. Here's my son. Guys, I challenge you as you go through this Christmas season to look at the gift of your family around you, the, the people that give you the greatest joy and understand that that is how God looks at you. He invites you into his family. He says, I have connected you. I've sent my son here to adopt you into my family. So I challenge you once again, look at your family and see the goodness of God, of his gifts of love that he has given you and understand that he is just waiting for you to join his family. Let's pray. 
Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you uh, for your word. And Lord, you know, sometimes as <clears throat> with my own uh, finite mind, it's so hard to comprehend. And in my best ability, I, I may get a little bit of theology mixed up and I, and I apologize. But Lord, I pray that people understand if though I might not have said it right, we understand that you sent your son to be fully God, but to be fully man, born of a woman. And you gave him to us as a gift, a gift that unites heaven and earth, a gift that unites your family with us so that we can be adopted into your kingdom. Lord God, we thank you for the gift of Jesus and that love that binds us all together, the gift of family. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you guys, and don't forget to uh, give a little grace. Hey guys, thanks for watching our videos. Once again, we really appreciate it. Uh, if you enjoy it, you know the whole drill. Click, like, subscribe, whatever you gotta do, uh, so that as soon as our videos are out, you can see what we have. We really appreciate it. Thanks, have a great day.